gloves aren't fixed. And then Alex, why don't you go get set up for the shop for the tree? All right. Kelsey and I will go back. We'll help my grandfather unload the wagon. And then when we get back, you should have everything in order for us to just drop the tree. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So what happened? We came down to a tarp full of snow. Yeah, it just lowered it. It's a nice thing with this little dynamic rope is the rope just stretched instead of the tarp ripping. All right. This is the last pine, hopefully, that we're going to drop. So as you can see, pretty big guy over here. We're going to flatten it out towards the woods so that we don't hit the fence um, and hopefully everything goes well. into the field. She sat back on me. Um, can we throw a line up and try to pull it? Yeah. Yeah, all right, well. She seems stable. Yeah. Let's go get some rope. Here comes Grandpappy. weight in the top going the wrong direction and 
did the notch and started the back cut, and she just sat back on my back cut and pinched the blade, and that was that. We got it though. We winched it out in the other way. Yeah, I'll crept the little tractor, hammer some wedges in while Grandpa bounced it with the tractor. Super safe. <laughs> Super safe. No problems. <laughs> Only thought I was gonna die for like, you know, four or five minutes. No worries. After a very busy weekend and a lot of excitement, as you can see, Kelsey and I then had to drive back up to Portland. Steve, on the other hand, continued with the rest of the milling. All right. So we weren't sure we had quite enough white pine. So we knocked another one down uh, the other week and I've been working on milling up the lumber for the pine today. And we're stacking it in the shed here so it can dry. And as you can see, this pile here has gotten pretty tall and getting these huge chunks of white pine that are green, so they have a lot of water, a lot of moisture in them, they're really heavy. All the way up here and then shoving them into place is it's really exhausting. So I've set up a little easier way to do it. And I can slide them off the mill onto these beams here, and I don't ever really have to pick up the whole thing. And then I throw a chain around it with this pulley, and chain another chain, or another pulley, up into the rafters, brought it down to a directional at the bottom, and then I hooked it up to my Subaru, and I can slowly drive away, and it lifts this beam up, and this one keeps it from getting caught underneath these, helps it ride up smooth, and once it clears this, I just stop the Subaru, I can grab the end of the beam, spin it around, shove it in, back up a little bit, lower it into place, and then once it's up there, I can move it around, but just getting them up is really tough. So we're going to move the camera a little bit, and do that. <laughs> so much easier than doing it by hand. So that worked well. Oh. All right, now I got some slack in the rope. Shove that into place. Probably faster just to muscle them up there but it's a lot more dangerous and it's a lot more exhausting so I can work like this all day long where if I tried to muscle these up there with just my brute strength you know I might get it done a little faster but I'm gonna be totally exhausted and the chance of me having one slide off and hit me or throw my back out or some shitty thing like that is a uh, much more likely. So, uh, work smarter, not harder. Now we'll clean the next one up and repeat the process. Alright, so I've been milling for um, like 15 days now. Um, we've got a lot done and a lot of people have come and helped out, so thank you very much for those folks um, that have come. And when I've been moving the lumber with people, I keep getting asked by them how I do it by my, when I'm by myself. Because um, moving these gigantic beams this is five and a half inches thick and you know, well over a foot wide, uh, and I can't, 
I mean, I can barely pick it up, and that end's kind of hanging over, which helps. It's, there's no way I could pick this up. Um, even with another person, we could barely pick it up. So I'm going to put this beam on that trailer. I'm going to do it by myself, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So the first step is to never, ever, ever pick up the beam. So if you spin it, it's not too bad. And it's more or less balancing. I'm holding here, but not by a ton. Okay, just gonna get that over. Now I need to slide it forward. But this beam is so heavy that I can't really do it. It's not gonna move. So I need to get creative and we need to manufacture some leverage. And it's slow, no doubt. It takes time. But you can do it without absolutely killing yourself. And I'd rather spend a little time than get a hernia. So we'll see if that's moved over enough. So that ends pretty close to where I want it to be. And we'll take this off. So if you notice, they have these beams here, one in the front, one in the back. And those are there so that if this pops off on me, hopefully they'll catch it. They might just break, but hopefully this will come down and it won't be terribly violent and they'll keep it off the ground. And as long as this beam is off the ground, it's easy to work with. Once it's sitting on the ground, totally flat, it's harder. you got to wedge a bar under there, and it gets kind of tough to get it up. All right. So now we can slide that end over. And i got to watch this end and make sure it doesn't walk itself off the trailer. Slide that over. beams up and we're going to lift this guy and put her on top. Like I said before, this is really too heavy to lift. So, do it. Flat bar. So I can't get it quite high enough. So we'll see if we can jack it up enough to put a shim under it. And we'll be able to get it a little bit higher. Jack that up. The bigger bite. Jack it up. Inside the bar underneath. Should be able to pick it up and more or less walk it on. So we hope that these boards don't break. They shouldn't. They're pretty thick. Slide this down. Boom! So it needs to go back a little bit, so I'll put the chain on it and use the pry bar and work it back a foot, but 
That's the process of getting a big old chunk of wood off the mill and onto the trailer and doing it by yourself without giving yourself a hernia. Thank you again to everyone who helped us through the milling process. It's been a huge help. Now for something else. We had to put up the boathouse. As I was still in Portland working, Steve had to start putting up the boathouse by himself. Here he is putting the frame up with another dedicated crew of friends. The next step is a little bit more exciting. The cable above the boathouse needed to go up. All right, camera's rolling, here we go. To roll and reverse of doom. This is the cable that will be padded and then have the plastic resting over it as a roof. It's all super tight. Yeah, I know. It's like you like grab that chain mic. It doesn't move. All right. Feels pretty good. I'll definitely say I've done a couple Tyrolean traverses, but this one, uh, this one takes the cake. If you can imagine that. Yeah, not often you build them out of trees and stuff. Oh, and I'm like. I'm well over 20 feet up. Well, this goes a long way towards uh, me having faith in holding the snow load. I mean, we were using it to skid logs with the tractor, and we had it on a three to one, and we're maxing out the 40 horsepower tractor. I feel better about that now that. Yeah. We ended up padding the cable so that there would be a larger surface of the plastic to run over. This would hopefully keep it from rubbing through the plastic. I think I have everything I need. And you know what the nice thing about having you here for a change? Is if I get up there and I forgot something, you can go get it. <laughs> Where for the last like, I don't know, year, I would have to come back down, go get it, jog back up. So having you here, Alex Creeder, is gonna make this much more efficient. Oh yeah, I should probably mention that I quit my job at this point. I moved down on August 1st to fully commit to work on the project. Now, back to how we got that foam on that cable. So that's why yesterday when I was up here and I was driving, people were driving by, they were giving me really funny looks. They're like, what the heck is that lunatic doing up there? This thing is quite unwieldy. Well, I 
for one, I'm glad that part's done. How do my skinny white thighs look from down there? <laughs> Pretty good. Well, I guess I can come down, huh? I think so. Uh, right here hurts. <laughs> if I pulled up my shorts, I bet you'd see a nice red line. This harness is pretty comfortable, but sitting in it and actually sitting all your weight in it for that long, it's uh, not the most comfortable thing in the world. And then having the foam resting on your head, and every time you pull on something because you're just hanging off the... Uh, carabiners so you slide forward or back so as soon as you pull it pulls it and then it's there uh... but it's done that's I think the best part about this project is that there's stuff that's really gonna suck but you only got to do it once it's not like a shitty job that you got to go back to every day you know once the job's done it's done so I don't have to get up there and put that foam on again it's finished you're good. Which is nice. It looks nice. I think it's going to go a long way towards padding it. I do too. Yeah. Whew. All right, I think there's one more beer in the fridge. I claim it. It's all yours. <laughs> Dude, I'm ready. I am 100% committed to either building this boat or dying trying. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm dying. Just dying real slow every day. And I'd rather go fast trying to do something with it than just rotting away like I am. <laughs>